Well, line me up, guys. Line me up for the firing squad. Because according to a woke professor, if you are a male and don't vote Kamala, if you don't vote socialist, you need to be shot. Yeah, this man actually said this during a class lecture. It's on camera. We got the video, folks. I cannot believe this, man. I thought that the left said um, political violence is unacceptable. But, you know, the media, the mainstream media definitely is not covering this vote. I can guarantee you that if a um, professor was actually a Trump supporter and said, if you don't vote for Trump, then you must you must be shot. It would be a massive problem, folks, a massive problem. However, this uh, University of Kansas professor still has his job right now. Yes, he's actually been put on leave. And apparently the university has released a statement. And the Outkick article here actually said it was a weak statement. I haven't seen it yet. Trying to go in as fresh as I can. But I did actually um, listen to the clip. Yeah, this professor absolutely did call for. (laughs) Um, men who don't vote for Kamala to be shot. What happened that to the party of uh, tolerance, right? I thought the Democrat Socialist Party was the party of tolerance. We've been hearing that, right? But the Democratic Party, man, is the party of violence. All of the political violence votes that is happening in this country is from the left. From Democrat Party supporters. Remember, guys, you don't hear much about this. But when Trump was inaugurated, the left rioted. They did. Also, back in um, 2020, Trump actually had to go to the bunker because the left went crazy. And remember, the mainstream media was saying that uh, Trump um, went over to that church across from uh, the White House for a photo op. The left went crazy, man, and started burning down stuff. They don't ever talk about an insurrection with those people, right? You never hear that. Roe versus Wade rights. A Supreme Court justice almost got assassinated. Trump himself survived two assassination attempts, actually three, because there was actually another one planned. All this violence, guys, even the uh, Paul Pelosi thing. Remember, the media was trying to uh, paint David the Pape as some type of a... um, right wing Trump supporter. He wasn't. This man was a super woke progressive and an illegal alien. This man actually had a BLM flag and a um, LGBT flag outside of his house. There was nothing screaming Trump supporter from that guy. But anyway, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this. Because this is really crazy here. Folks, going to these quote unquote institutions of higher learning They just make you come out dumber because these college graduates, man, they break for Democrats. They vote for your own demise. But in college, man, you're actually supposed to come out smarter, right? I mean, when I went to college, folks, I studied economics. Okay, And this is just an example here. And I really do like my professor that actually uh, taught the class. I mean, back in um. Back in 08, he actually called the Great Recession before the media did. But I remember him saying that uh, presidents don't have any impact on gas prices. He actually told us that. But now, guys, we know that presidents definitely can have an impact on gas prices. Their economic policies can determine gas prices. So they're not directly uh, flipping a switch, you know, controlling gas prices, but their economic policies lead to changes. And we saw that with Biden, guys. But anyway, here we go. Right here, guys. Professor urges men who won't vote for a female president to be shot. University releases weak statement. Wow. A University of Kansas professor is on leave. After appalling remarks about killing some male voters. Professor Phil Lowcock, that's really his name, guys, (laughs) 
went mega, mega viral Wednesday when he suggested men who don't want to vote for a female to be president should be executed by firing squad. Wow. The comments can clearly be tied to the fact Kamala Harris is the Democrat coup nominee for president. Yeah, I'm calling her a coup nominee because nobody voted for her. Let's go ahead and watch this, guys. I cannot believe this man actually came out and said this. Let's roll it. And girls, you got some serious problems. Uh, that's what frustrates me. There are going to be some males in our society that will refuse to vote for a potential fe female president because they don't think females are smart enough to be president. We could line all those guys up and shoot them. They clearly don't understand the way the world works. Did I say that? I, scratch that from the recording. I don't want the deans hearing that I said that. Well, this man said it. This man said it, and he knew he was being recorded. He knew that, man. Following the comments uh, going viral, the school announced that Lockwood was placed on leave and his page on the athletic website is now a 404 error. So the athletic website, was he a coach also as well? I don't know. Doesn't matter. This is this is what they actually um, said right here. The university. The university is aware of a classroom video in which an instructor made an inappropriate reference to violence. The instructor is being placed on administrative leave pending further investigation. The instructor offers his sincerest apologies and deeply regrets the situation. No, he doesn't. His intent was to emphasize his advocacy for women's rights and equality. And he recognizes he did a very poor job of doing so. The university has an established process for situations like this and will follow that process. Well, I'm curious, what is that process? What is the process? You see, folks, statements like that, man, can lead to political violence. You know, it's like the rhetoric that the uh, Democrats do when they uh, call Trump Hitler. And they're still calling Trump Hitler right now, guys. I mean, I saw something really, really crazy the other day. And this may have actually been old. I'm not really sure. But it was a Hitler reference with Trump where this left winger was talking about Trump. Trump has always idolized the Nazis and Hitler. He wants to be like Hitler. I'm like, what are you talking about? It doesn't make any sense, man. It doesn't make any sense. And to get back to this guy, man. I don't believe for one second that this man regrets what he said. He only regretted that he got punished for it. Now, what's the next step? Is he actually going to get um get lose his job? I mean, words like that, man, when you're actively calling for political violence. Yeah, you, sh you should lose your job. You really should, man. I, I get it, man. This guy, if you want to be a Democrat, that's that's your business. If you want to vote for Kamala Harris, that's your business. But maybe just maybe, man, he was actually triggered by the polls that men are flocking to Trump. I'm not talking about just white men. I'm talking about all men in general, man. Black men are voting for Trump. Folks, I honestly believe that um, probably 40 percent of black men are probably going to vote for Trump. That's why you actually see. Uh, Trump with something like 20, 25, I've actually seen 30 percent of, of the black vote. It's because black men are breaking for Trump in droves. And as the days go by, man, as Kamala Harris continues to do all of these interviews, she's failing. This woman is in real trouble, guys, real trouble. Look at this. This is on um the post millennial. Kamala Harris in trouble in swing states per private polling. I've been talking about this, guys. Their internal polls show horrific, a horrific disaster for Kamala Harris. She's not doing good. She's not. She's in bit trouble, man. Uh, look at this here. Let's play this. We're talking about Harris a lot on this program for a couple reasons. OK, we know what Trump is. We don't need to spend every episode talking about January 6th. We'll talk about it. If people want to bring it up. 
What's happening now with Kamala Harris is this is an experiment. Can you win a short campaign with an untested candidate? And what I'm telling you is happening in private polling is she's got a problem now. OK, it's not cheering for Trump. It's not predicting Trump will win. She's got a problem. Uh, please bring up first bring up the New York Times poll. So New New York Times poll shows her up three nationally. We all know that three is like the bubble point, right? If she's up three, uh, she's got a chance uh, to win win the Electoral College. But remember, that's just one poll. That poll right there from the New York Times, that is a left leaning poll. That's not good. But they'd rather be at four and they don't want to be at two. So three is right at the bubble. I'm not saying this Times poll is right. It's in line with other national polls. Now, bring up 102. Wall Street Journal has a story about Democrats really worried about the, 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 the three Rust Belt states. We all know from our contacts in both campaigns that Pennsylvania is tough for her right now. And without Pennsylvania, there are paths, but there aren't many. There's no path without Wisconsin. So you see here, Tammy Baldwin's Senate campaign polls shows Harris down three in Wisconsin. We all said yesterday, Wisconsin and Michigan are looking worse for Harris than before. Baldwin has her down three, not Baldwin has Harris down three. Why is the Baldwin campaign sharing its polling with the Wall Street Journal? Good question. Sean, why would a campaign share their polling negative for their candidate? Because they want more visits? Is that is that the reason? I mean, I think part of this is like a Hillary Clinton redux, which is that you want to make sure people understand what's going on. Plus, you're tied to it. Tammy Baldwin can't win if if if, if Kamala Harris loses. Yes, yeah, she can. She can. I think OK, she can. well, in a close. Uh, well, even so, with that being said, one of the reasons why they kicked out Biden is because he was hurting other candidates down the ballot. And Kamala Harris now at this point doing all these interviews and stuff. It's getting worse by the day. I mean, she's really exposing how bad she is, man. It's in a close race, she can't. Okay, maybe yeah. it's not a yeah. 5,000 vote squeaker, but I, yeah. I think part of this is to make sure that they understand this. But I will say this, and off topic, Alyssa Slocken said the same thing last week in Michigan. Like, this is Correct. what we talking about the other day. This Correct. Is the Correct. Correct. They are sending I think that's, the, that's the challenge for Democrats is the trend lines, right? I mean, if, if yeah. you just go back now for the last three to four weeks in Michigan and in Wisconsin, not that Harris was up, you know, seven and it went down to four, down to one. It's, you know, it's gone from, from three to two to one to tied. And at the same time, those Senate candidates, Casey, Slotkin and Baldwin are seeing right. the same all much, all much closer, all much right. closer. By the way, and so, I, so, and, and yeah, so you do it to sound the alarm bell. You I, are sounding Mark, the I, alarm I just, bell in the party. Yeah, Mark, right. I mean, Dan's right. But I can just a little asterisk point. I don't want to go on this, but I think it was funny. A week ago, you had Chuck Schumer and the, and the D-Trip kind of are the DSCC pivot and say, we're, we're going to bail on Montana and go after Texas and Florida on offense. And here they are seven days later going, oh, crap. Uh, I mean, this, 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 uh, I just get a kick out of this because after November 5th, we may look back and say, wow, that was a horrible mistake not to fortify. Yes. The yeah. trenches. Well, you, I, I, you, I think you. that that move by Schumer was all designed to prevent people from throwing the towel in at the DSCC yeah. and all. Sh what, what they're talking about is like, I'm in Texas, for example. Kamala Harris has no shot out here in Texas. Trump, I believe, is actually going to win Texas by double digits. For one thing, in 2020, the polls were way, way off in Texas. It said that Trump was only going to win by one point. He won by almost six. Right now, the polls are showing him winning by like six. And if that same mistake happens this time, He's winning Texas by almost 12. But the thing is, they know that Kamala Harris cannot win. So what they're doing is they're flooding money into Texas for Colin Allred to try and beat Ted Cruz. That's not going to happen. One of the reasons why Ted Cruz only won by three points in 2018 is, for one thing, guess what? This is a big factor here. Trump was not on the ballot. And 2018 was more of a blue wave year. And they flooded a record amount of money in Texas and he still lost. Colin Allred is no Beto O'Rourke. I'm not even a Beto fan. Beto was more popular than than Colin Allred. And I believe that Trump is actually going to carry Ted Cruz down ballot. That's a huge factor right there. So Democrats are wasting money in Texas 
instead of like um, other swing states on the presidential level. They're not winning Texas. Yes. He 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 I, I know, I yeah. know. Yeah. And, and just switching just to Republicans. They have to pretend they can win the majority. They have to have a, exactly. a talking a, a, a path to talk through. For you Harris people on here complaining that we're talking about problems in, in the in the Harris campaign, you're welcome to put your head in the sand about it. If you want to go watch MSNBC primetime and hear how great things are going for the Harris campaign, you're welcome to do that. But if you want to understand what's actually happening, we're here to tell you. I just saw some new private polling today that's very robust private polling. She's in a lot of trouble. Here's how I framed it this morning in my newsletter. The conversation I'm having with, with with Trump people and Democrats with data are are extremely bullish on Trump's chances in the last 48 hours. Extremely bullish. You think of the seven battleground states. Which ones is Harris in danger of losing? I would say Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, North Carolina, and Georgia. I'm not saying she'll lose all six, but she's in danger. The only one that the Democrats say she's not in danger of losing is the one I never say the name of. I can't pronounce it, but it's where Las Vegas is, right? You guys agree with me? She could lose any of those six, right? I mean, she could lose all seven, but Democrats will tell you they're worried about this, those six. They're less worried about the seven. Yeah. I don't know any Trump person who says they're worried about losing any of the seven. They don't know that they don't necessarily think they're the favorite in, in Michigan and Wisconsin, but they're not worried about losing it. Right. There's not you don't hear from them. Oh, my goodness. What you hear is we're moving up. What what the three of us are hearing. We're moving up in those two. We're going to win. We're going to win the three Sunbelt states. And we're stronger in Pennsylvania than she is. That to me, if the whole thing's about the Electoral College, you take any of the any of the sun of the Rust Belt states away from her. It's very difficult for her to win. Very difficult. It's not mathematically impossible, but it probably won't happen if she loses any of them. So now, that, could you she can replace Pennsylvania with either Georgia, North Carolina, and then one other of the Sunbelt states. Nevada. Yep. Well, well, any of them. If she wins, yeah, yeah. if she loses Pennsylvania, and she they, she wins either Georgia or North Carolina, then she just needs one of the other three. And that's not impossible. But what I'm telling you today is things are not moving right for her. Yeah, there you have it, guys. It's looking real bad in uh, Georgia for um, Kamala Harris. She's not going to win Georgia as of right now. Now, things could change. Don't get overconfident. You must go out there and execute. Bring your friends and vote Trump. That is what must happen. But there you have it, man. That professor there, maybe he actually knew the internal polls, too. I don't know what possessed this idiot to come out there and say, hey, if you don't vote for a woman, you must be shot. He didn't name Kamala Harris, but we absolutely know he was talking about Kamala Harris because she's the only woman here on the ticket. So. They have it, guys. That's just my thoughts on this. What do you guys think of this? Black and white network fans, let us know what you think about all this in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And we'll catch you next time.